Hello everyone, I'm bringing you a video today which is something of a follow-up to the previous Mannequin of the Month video talking about RAF ground crew. Looking at the overalls shown in that video in a little bit more detail, obviously we looked at the external details of these to some degree, we didn't look at the internal details, and I wanted to talk about them a bit more. It's quite an interesting garment in terms of the uh, features, uh, quite expensive to make I would imagine. I don't have an introduction date for this other than sort of looking at photographs which she seems to show they appeared in the immediate post-war years. I don't believe it's a wartime design and were certainly used through the 1950s, 1960s and possibly into the early 1970s as well when a newer, cheaper to manufacture design was introduced in polycotton and I believe that is the, the point these were replaced. The suit is very practical, obviously it's a one-piece garment uh, overall and from the point of view of a practical working garment, it really is a good design. Concealed buttons down the front here, as you can see, can be buttoned right the way up to the collar if required. There's a hook and eye there as well, as you can see, but generally worn open, the shirt and tie underneath. No external breast pockets here. There is an internal pocket, which we'll see when we turn this inside out. There's a draw cord at the waist, and I did mention these details in the Mannequin for Month video, but I will run over the external details here for completeness, and then we'll have a look at the internal details as well. You have pockets on the hips here. There are actually pockets in the overalls and then also slits to get through to the internal pockets as well. And we'll have a look at those in a little bit more detail as we start moving this round. And in terms of the, the leg design, we have here at the cuff a, a opening there that can be adjusted in. So you have two male Nui press studs there and the female and you can tighten these in around the boots or the shoes worn with this and photographs do show both shoes and boots worn with these overalls so that to uh, feature the the ankles there and obviously this means you can open these up and easily put them on over existing clothing over existing footwear and uh, that's a, a useful feature of the design there we'll start moving this round now and have a look at the other details looking at the right hand side of this as we can see there's no epaulette on the shoulder or anything here as you can see the arm curves round slightly to the front and we have the cuff here, which again adjusts with two press studs as we saw on the legs. So you have a, a looser and a tighter adjustment there. This opens up nice and wide. There is a gusset, but it opens up nice and wide to again allow this to be easily donned over clothing worn underneath. And you have the, the press studs there to draw the cuff in as required. We don't have any rank displayed on this. As I say, there is no epaulette, but we, we, we might see rank worn with an armband, which is actually made in the same material, the same green denim material, and that could display rank. Had one of those on the mannequin in the Mannequin of the Month video. You don't have that here. These were commonly worn without any rank displayed as well. Uh, it really just depends on the situation. There are lots of photographs showing, uh, some showing rank and some showing no rank worn. So that's a detail there. If we lift the arm out of the way, we can see the pocket in more detail here. You have a flap here over both. A hip pocket built into the overalls there, which we'll see when we turn this inside out, and also a slit through to the black. You can see the black material of the mannequin underneath there to allow you to access the trousers worn underneath this. So you have both options there, both integral pockets and the ability to access the pockets within. Looking at the back of this, you can see details of the construction. If you turn the collar up here, you can see the collar band. We have the hanging tag sewn in there. The seam running down the rear here and the channel for the draw cord, you can see that there and obviously we'll see details of the draw cord when we turn this inside out. Otherwise very plain, there's not a huge amount more detail to see here. We'll fold the collar down and continue on to have a look at the left hand side. Moving on to look at the left hand side here, it's almost a mirror image of the right hand side but there is one major difference and that is we have a leg pocket down here which is a, a patch pocket with a press studded flap over it as you can see here. And it's relatively small pocket, and I would suggest this was probably designed for something as specific initially, uh, but what that was, I don't know. Uh, and in photographs, you occasionally see these with, with rules and things stuck in them uh, and other bits and pieces I've seen in, uh, in sort of workshop scenarios. Uh, so again, I'm not entirely sure what this was initially designed for. Given the, the limited size of it, I would imagine it was designed for something specific, as I say, but what that was, not entirely sure. So that's the leg pocket down there. So I've turned the overall inside out here so we can see further details of the construction, obviously internal details we couldn't see with it the right way out. So we can see here the concealed closure down the front here with the concealed buttonholes there. See details of that there. There is an internal breast pocket which you can see here. You see that there. There was once a label here, well the label is still here, but it's completely illegible, completely washed out unfortunately, but that's where the label 
would have been, or would, that's where the details of this garment would have been. There is a, a label in the collar, which we'll have a look at in just a minute. You can perhaps see the hook and eye at the collar there a little bit more clearly as well. This is the draw cord I mentioned. So this does have a draw cord to draw it in around the waist. And this is a mesh draw cord. This style of draw cord would later be seen in combat uniform uh, in quite some e uh, years in the future. Uh, these, this sort of draw cord, I think, had initially been seen in issue pajamas, uh, but is used in this, uh, uh, this garment as well. And it's just a, a fairly loosely woven uh, tape, cloth tape, or sort of a mesh tape. You can see that there. And that could be used to draw this in and tie off as required. Otherwise, there's not a huge amount more detail to see here. Perhaps it turned out inside out the fact this is made of the same sort of green denim as the denim battle dress uniform, the denim working uniform. Uh, it's a little bit more clear to see that perhaps, but it turned inside out. Uh, you can see bags for the pockets and so forth. We'll see more detail of that uh, when we move this round. Just pull the leg up here so you can see the details of the construction there. We have that gusset at the, uh, the cuff there. Obviously, the press studs are seen before, um, but that's... Uh, Otherwise, again, very plain, other than the details on the, uh, on the cuff at the ankle there. So that's the internal details of the front of this. We'll start moving this around now and have a look at some of the other details. Looking at the right-hand side of the internals here, obviously this would be the left side if it was worn the right way out. We can see details of the construction here again. You can see that slight forward curve to the arm there, the cuff, the two press studs there, and that gusset sewn in at the, the cuff there details of the the collar the way the collar's attached round there and obviously the bag of the the pocket coming round there for the, the internal breast pocket which is a fairly good size as you can see you can see how we have the the bag for the integral pockets as part of this and then in addition to that obviously you have the the flap the uh, opening there to allow access to the inter the uh, pockets of the garment worn under this rather and obviously down here on the leg have the reinforcing stitching there for where the pocket is attached on the leg. You can see that there. We all also have the detail of the side seam of the pocket there as well as you can see. Uh, detail of the construction there. We'll move this around now and have a look at the back. At the back here again, there's not a huge amount more to see. You can see the channel coming around for the draw cord there. Some details of the construction, obviously the centre seam down there. Uh, we do have a hanging tab in the collar here as you can see. And then we do have an additional label here with 10 and fully shrunk written underneath there. It uh, looks more like a civilian sort of label, so this attached in addition to the label, the faded label we saw on the uh, breast pocket, the internal breast pocket around the front. We won't bother having a look at the left-hand side. That's basically a mirror image of the right other than the leg pocket. So that's the internal details of this overall. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. I think overalls, working uniform is often something that's neglected, so I thought it was worth talking about this in a bit more detail, obviously with more detail than could be shown in Mannequin of the Month. And it's a useful thing to have in the collection. I've made use of this when attending events with the Shackleton at Coventry Airport, which I think is actually moving now. Uh, but it was a useful garment to have from that point of view and an interesting thing to have in the collection. Obviously quite heavily worn and stained and so forth, and we have an M painted on the breast here. Uh, but as I say, in terms of working uniform, there are still a few of these knocking around. I've seen a few for sale on eBay, very heavy duty garments, so it's not surprising these survived. Uh, but obviously lots of working uniform overalls and so forth don't. They were used up and obviously a useful sur surplus, surplus item as well. So often used up in Civvy Street, if not used uh, to death in the military. These were worn not only by ground crew servicing aircraft and working in various support roles. There are also photographs showing national servicemen wearing these with web equipment over them, obviously on exercise, uh, which makes sense. It saves wear and tear on the wool serge uniform, of course, to wear an overall for that sort of thing. And there are photographs showing this. As I said, I do hope you found it interesting running through this in some detail. If you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as I always say, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there in the description as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.